radical actions add up to de facto national policy. A lot of times, our federal government, particularly in recent years, is slow to act and not responding to the times we're living in. Sometimes the way to break through is to create so much demand from below, so much progress from below, that it becomes inexorable. It becomes a reality unto itself. That's what we're trying to do in our way here. That's what everyone in this room has the opportunity to do where you work and to add it together into a totality. Um, I'll just finish by offering an example because these ideas, on the one hand, they're very heady. It comes back to the core notions of democracy and freedom of information, and what an egalitarian society looks like. Now, on the other hand, they're very practical. For the people who do not yet have access, nothing could be more personal. For those who get access, nothing could be more personally transformative for them and their families. I want to tell you a simple story. A young man named George Taveras, 24 years old, from the Bronx. George... <clears throat> lived a reality that is so common in this country today, particularly for people of color, particularly for young men of color. He pursued an education with a lot of energy and a lot of focus, but it was just too much for him economically to keep up with the demand. So he started community college, and he left after one semester. And this is, again, a phenomenon we see too much of. Good young people who fight all their way to that starting line, get started, and can't follow through because of economics. He left after one semester because he needed a job to help support his parents. And that could have been the end of a story. That could have been a very sad end of a story for a promising young man for whom the unfair economics of our country just didn't add up. So he needed to support his parents. He needed to take whatever job he could get. He got a job at a restaurant as a busboy, making a grand minimum wage of $5 an hour because tips were supposed to make up the rest. Say the least, not taking him forward in any meaningful way. But he didn't lose his interest in trying to find a different path forward. And he had a great love of technology. He was interested in web development. And on the subway to and from work, he would study books about programming on his own. He would self-educate. He needed a breakthrough. And he found the New York City Web Development found a Fellowship online. This is part of something we're very proud of, our Tech Talent Pipeline, which is a $10 million effort to get public and private opportunities to train young people for the kinds of jobs in the tech sector in the city. So in this case, George... Find something online that opens his mind to the possibility there may be another path. He got five months of intensive training through this program with the Flatiron School. Well, you've probably guessed the outcome of this story. With that training, George was able to transform his life. He got a job at the XO Group as a web developer. Today, this community college dropout with limited prospects, is making $75,000 a year in his tech job. That is one example of personal transformation, of transformation for a family. One example. There are so many others out there if we do what we all know how to do to create real access. And so George's story shows us this is about everything we value. This is about, of course, freedom of expression. This is about access to information. This is about equality. It's also about an economy that's actually inclusive, regardless of who you are, where you come from.